Hmm. The heater is on. I didn't think about that. So, uh, you're just gonna... We're just gonna have to suffer through the heater being on, I think. Yeah? Is my lipstick okay? Hmm. Maybe? Hello there, welcome back to the Closet Historian. Today I wanted to share with you guys some of my most recent thrifted finds. You all saw me thrifting in that vlog. I posted a couple of videos back. I'll put a card up to it here now. And I just wanted to show you all what I picked up that day, uh, those two days when I went out thrifting last month. Now all this stuff I did pick up at two different ARC thrift stores. And the first one I visited, I believe I did mention, was really a, a great thrifting day. Sometimes you just have luck on a day. Sometimes you go and you can't find anything and then sometimes it's just like the jackpot day. Um, and this day was a jackpot day. And the first thing I picked up over at the ARC was in the scarf section, which is one of my favorite, very favorite sections to check out, of course, uh, because I'm always on the hunt for silk scarves to tie in my hair or to wear under with suits or for anything. I have a lot of silk scarves and a lot of them are from thrifting. But this is not a silk scarf, except for that maybe it's silk velvet? I'm not sure. It probably just looks like Vanta black on the camera because Black velvet just absorbs all the light and you can't really see it, but this is lined in some sort of a patterned uh, silk. It's like a really random pattern. It's not floral, it's not geometric. It's just kind of like a random squiggly pattern. And I think this is possibly silk or rayon. Again, it doesn't feel like polyester at all. I can't tell if it's silk or uh, rayon velvet though, but it's really quite nice. It's very large, long shawl. Uh, not really a scarf, more of a shawl. Uh, kind of something to wear over your shoulders with evening wear or with anything really. Uh, but it's pretty wide, about 15 inches maybe wide at least, and then very long, maybe three yards long. And I love black velvet. Uh, I know some people, velvet is a very divisive fabric. I know that some people really don't like velvet, but I am not one of those people. I'm a huge fan, um, especially when it's a rayon or silk velvet or cotton velvet, anything that isn't polyester or acetate, which even those, I still like those because I just love velvet. So, you know, you can't, you can't turn me off velvet for some reason. Uh, anything, anything with stretch velvet. Now that I think about it, I don't like stretchy velvet, but everything else I'm in. But I just thought this was a super great shawl for like wearing with evening things when it's not too, too freezing outside or even over a coat as like a scarf uh, more traditionally with things in the evening time or even just going out to dinner uh, just because it's so pretty and kind of gothic and you know, would work for any era really. Anything from like Edwardian to now, you can get away with a shawl and even before then everyone had shawls. so you know, a good classic piece here, a velvet shawl. It has no weird, it's really in good condition, no weird, uh, you know, ironing marks, no perfume smells, nothing. It's really quite well nice, uh, well conditioned. Uh, but it was only $4, $3.99 here, so I thought that was an excellent price for such a useful and pretty shawl to add to my collection. And before I forget to mention, this sweater that I'm wearing right now is actually a um, basic sweater from Lindy Bob from a few years ago that I added this embellishment to, and I do have a tutorial on my blog for how to do that or how I did this one. So I will actually link that in the description below as well. So if anyone's wondering where I got this little, like, I was inspired by the movie Brooklyn where she wears an embellished sweater and I was like, I need me one of those. Uh, so I actually took one of my Lindy Bob sweaters and added this embellishment uh, sequence and beads to it. But I did do a tutorial for that over on my blog. So I will link that in the description below. It's from a few years ago. I should probably spell check it before I link you over there. I'll do that. But in case anyone's wondering, that's where the sweater is from. The second item I have to show you from my recent thrifting adventures is actually a skirt slip. And again, kind of kind of hard to show you. Um, this is just a black nylon skirt slip. It's quite long, actually, maybe like 28 inches, which is what most of my skirts are. So that's super useful. It's got really nice lace here, a little bit of a side slit, really nice lace along the bottom. That's actually what stood out to me when I went over to the slips. A lot of them are really you know, cheap, like the modern slips that they have at the store still um, already. But sometimes you can find things they're a little bit weightier, a little bit nicer like this one. The lace on this just stood out to me as a little bit higher quality um, lace. It's almost like a corded Alonzon, which is kind of crazy on a nylon slip. This is actually from Vanity Fair. I'm not sure what era this is from because nylon slips have been a thing since like the late 1950s, so, or mid 1950s probably, but super useful item. Don't be weirded out by the slips at the thrift store. I know it's technically like underwear and it feels weird to go into the underwear section at the thrift store because you're like, use clothes maybe, but used underwear feels weird. Uh, but again, you throw these things in the wash on the delicate cycle in this case, uh, and then they're like brand new. And they just, the vintage slips, even if they're only from like 15, 20 years ago, just tend to be nicer than the ones available now. So I really suggest you go and check out both the skirt and dress slips at the thrift store. Um, that's where I found most of mine. It's a lot cheaper than buying them online for whatever reason, because people, people know longer vintage dress slips are in high demand. So online they tend to be priced actually quite high. And I think this one was like under $5 at the ARC. So 
not a section to skip, even though it may seem a little bit more creepy to go buy an old underwear. Don't skip it. Just throw it in the wash and then it's yours. It's fine. Another item I picked up from the same ARC location uh, where I got the black skirt slip that I just talked about was this black silk collared blouse. It's just a very basic sort of simple uh, all-in-one sleeve, kimono sleeve is what this is called, where there's not a shoulder seam here. Um, so it's all cut in one like this. And it actually has some interesting paneling a little bit going on, even though it's all in black silk. Just some pockets here in front. There's a button placket here. Uh, just pleats in the back here. Gonna be super great tucked in with skirts or underneath my suiting. I'm really excited that I found this blouse because I have a similar blouse that's a little bit less nice than this one, actually, from when I worked at Banana Republic. And I wear that blouse all of the time during the spring and summer. And so to have another one, another silk blouse that's very similar will be super useful because this one and the other one I already own are both dry clean only. And of course, dry clean only, uh, it ends up in the dry clean pile pretty quickly. And then I don't, I, I never take things to the cleaner in a timely manner. So it's good to have a duplicate in this sense for such a simple item. And this was uh, $2.99 at the ARC. And uh, it's 100% silk blouse for $3.00 in a very classic style that can be styled super mid-century. Um, a lot of blouses, they had a lot of blouses like this in the 1950s. And I just can't believe you can get 100% silk blouse, really nice blouses at the thrift store for like $3. So if you're not thrifting, what are you even doing? Like you need to get to the thrift store. Like I know you have to take it to the dry cleaner, but even with dry cleaning, no matter how much they charge for $3, you're getting a really good deal on this blouse. Like get thee to the thrift store is what I'm saying. Moving right along into items that are a little bit less vintage appropriate, uh, or at least not the kind of vintage you're used to seeing me in. I actually did pick up two, whoop, two Star Wars t-shirts while I was at the thrift store, which just goes to show that like you don't have to buy, even if you want something super like pop culture-y and trendy and comfortable, you don't need to buy things new. Um, I have bought a lot of brand new uh, Star Wars t-shirts at Target and things like that over the years. Uh, you know, it's like really easy because they're cheap to pick them up while you're out and you're like, like Star Wars. They make great pajama t-shirts as well. Not that I wouldn't wear this one tucked into a pencil skirt because I will. Um, but even the oversized ones are really good as pajamas. And I, I buy a lot of nerdy t-shirts or I used to back when I bought fast fashion or things at Target, things like that. And you really don't even need to, if, even if you want something as nerdy and pop culture and current kind of as this, you can usually find them at the thrift store because a lot, and this, these were actually both found in the little boys section at the thrift store. Because kids grow out of stuff really quickly, it ends up at the thrift store. So you can find like really culturally relevant t-shirts, or even if they're not, even if they're vintage, like even better. If you can find vintage something, something like this vintage, people would pay a lot more for. But these again were like $4. This one was, yeah, both of them were $3.50, which is much cheaper than getting them at Target. And you're not, if you're buying them used, you're not actually contributing to like the machine that says you need a new Millennium Falcon t-shirt every season, which I do kind of want one because I'm a fangirl, but even things like this you can find used is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to tell you. Even things like this you can find at the thrift store. Another basic I picked up was this black long sleeve mock neck, like turtlenecky style tee. These are super, you know, everyone makes fun of shirts like this because it's like a little bit Steve Jobs, um, but they're super cute and very like beatnik almost looking when you style them in a late 50s, early 60s kind of way. I think they're really good for a mid-century look actually and a little bit warmer for the wintry season here. This one is a little bit thicker t-shirt, not fully a sweater weight, but a thicker t-shirt. It's from Jones Sport, which I'm sure is like Jones of New York, that, that brand, and it was $5, but I'm excited to style this with like my pleated skirts for winter time, my pleated like plaid skirts. I think it'll look kind of collegiate, which is a, a look I like to go for sometimes or just really kind of like kitten it up with a tight pencil skirt and like high heels and like black patent leather, a beret, things like that. So I was happy to pick this one up and add it to my wardrobe. Another mock neck I found while out thrifting was this short sleeve sweater. This one actually is a cotton sweater, so it's not gonna be too, too warm. Obviously again, with the short sleeve, it's not gonna be too, too warm. This one is from a brand called American Living, which I think is like a Ralph Lauren for JCPenney brand that they had a couple of years ago, or maybe they still have it, I'm not sure. This one was $3.99, $4 again, for a really cute sweater that's still in really great condition, no pilling or anything going on here. And Leopard is almost a neutral um, in vintage or in any styling really. And I'm really excited to wear this again with like black pencil skirt and like a black beret and like black patent leather accessories maybe uh, for a more sexier look. And then even with like jeans, this would be super cute with high-waisted jeans as well and like a big gold earring or something. 
So I was really happy to have found this. The next item I picked up is a little bit strange and that is because it's this 1980s polyester dress. And we all know I'm not the world's biggest fan of polyester. I don't usually buy it and I don't wear a ton of 80s fashion. Uh, it's, I, I wear 80s influence fashion a lot and I do like 19, some of 1980s fashion. Some of it is too much. Um, but this dress, I don't really like the way the top of it fits, but I really liked this like permanent pleated skirt and I really liked the print of it. So I'm going to take the skirt off of this bodice and make it into a just a skirt and I will wear this skirt with a black sweater or my black mock neck that I picked up. And then uh, the bodice I'm not really going to save at all, but I am going to save the shoulder pads out of this. A lot of people will buy dresses when they're thrifting and cut the shoulder pads out and then wear the dress. I want the shoulder pads um, and I don't really want this dress. I want the skirt of the dress, but I don't want the dress itself. But I will save these because buying pre-made shoulder pads, um, because I'm lazy and I don't want to make them, can get expensive um, at Joann's and stuff like that. But because I'm already going to be using the skirt of this to make a skirt, I will cut out the shoulder pads and use those for a 40s dress sometime as well. So unexpected sources for sewing supplies right there. Um, this dress was actually $7, but it was half off of that um, because it was half off pink tags that day. So a really nice find, but something something I may not have um, expected or like may have passed over because it was polyester, but I'm glad that I took it off the rack and took a closer look because I really do like permanent pleated skirts and they are actually quite trendy right now, um, even though they work for many, many eras. So I'm excited to do this little DIY and I'm sure I will show you guys the results. I may even do, a, if you guys are interested in seeing me DIY this, let me know in the comments below. Um, and then I will show you how I would turn this into a skirt or how I do turn it into a skirt. So let me know if that's something you would like to see. You know, every once in a while I do become conscious that I'm talking really fast, like people always complain, but like I do talk fast. It's just, I can't help it. It's who I am. I'm sorry. I talk really fast. I do it all the time. People, people in my real life complain as well. So you all can commiserate together. I don't know. Something else I found in the skirt section at the Ark was this faux suede, sort of a brushed, well, not cotton, but some sort of brushed blend, almost faux suede style midi skirt in this it's like a weird kind of green tinged tan khaki brown color that doesn't have a name. It's got a really long slits on the both sides. Super 90s. I thought this would just really be great with like the black mock neck and like a long necklace even. It would be more of a 70s-ish look. Um, just depending on how you style it, it can be looked like it's from different eras, but it, it's a very classically 90s piece, which is something I was actually looking for. I kind of want to play with 90s fashion a little bit more. I like bouncing around with eras. I'm not a purist in any sense, um, as you guys probably have realized being around this channel. So. Uh, I think I could style this 50s. I think I could style it 70s or modern. So I was really happy to find this piece. It was $4.99, so $5 total. Such a good deal. And it's going to be super comfortable because it has a little bit of elastic here in the back and it's a really soft fabric. So I was happy to find this one. Another skirt I found is this very safari styled, probably late 80s or uh, 90s skirt. It's a quite a long midi length. I probably am going to hem this one because it is too long on me honestly but it does have pockets in the front and belt loops and some top stitching detail it's very much a safari styled skirt or like adventure style skirt which is a style i wear all the time in the summer months so this is going to be a great addition to my wardrobe for that reason it's going to match a lot of safari shirts and button downs and things i already have so it's going to be a great versatile piece of my wardrobe and i don't have any skirts this color until this shopping trip obviously i bought two of them so now i have one for fall and one for summer pretty much this one was 4.99 so another five dollar skirt to add to my wardrobe here i did find one more skirt to show you guys but um it's like not really going to show up on camera it's just a black wool uh longer midi length pleated skirt it is a like wool suiting fabric um, not too thick not too thin perfect for fall and winter time this one again uh, this skirt is too long for my liking. I will be hemming this one as well, which is what I usually do with these 80s skirts. But they're otherwise really great quality, and they work so well for 1940s and mid-century looks. Um, a pleated skirt hasn't really changed that much in the last several several decades. Um, pretty much since like the 19, like I don't know, late 1930s, pleated skirts have been a thing. So if you can get the ones from the 80s for a lot cheaper, then I think you should. Um, and they're definitely readily readily available at the thrift store. This one is from lands in and is probably i'm pretty sure from the 80s um professionally dry clean only unfortunately but how often do you spill things on your skirt i mean i'm a, i'm a mess but how often do normal people spill things on their skirt hopefully not too often um this one was another pink tag so it was half off of this price so it was only two dollars and fifty cents for a nice long fits me perfectly wool black pleated skirt perfect for winter time uh, something i didn't have in my wardrobe before and now i have it for less than the gossip of starbucks thrifting is amazing. Then the last two items I picked up were really nice thick winter coats. Um, 
I, wool coats are quite expensive, like nicer lined real wool coats are quite expensive when you go out to buy them new, but they, they are at the thrift store. They have extremely cute wool coats at the thrift store and you can buy them kind of oversized. It doesn't really matter because it's just a big coat that you're going to throw on over everything else. Um, it's kind of more modern to buy an oversized coat now anyway, like that's very in. Um, so you can definitely get away with like not caring about sizes very much, but they are just so inexpensive as a thrift store, you wouldn't believe. Um, so this is one of the first uh, of two coats that I picked up. This is one of two coats that I picked up on this last thrifting trip of mine. This one is definitely like brown and black and different speckles of different colors, but it comes across as mostly a sort of lighter taupey brown color. It has big pockets in the front, big buttons to button it. It is a little bit oversized on me. It's got really nice structured soldiers with a little bit of padding in there. Um, the sleeves are a little bit short on me. I think maybe they're supposed to be bracelet length sleeves or I'm just gonna wear them as if they are and wear them with longer gloves underneath and sort of style this in a more 1960s swing coat kind of way, even though that's not what this is, but that's how I plan on styling it. It's so thick and gonna be so warm, in great condition, no moth holes, nothing going on. Just a really great coat made in the USA, which is, you know, always a plus. Um, it's got a wool label down here that says professionally dry clean only, 100% wool. Um, so it's just a really nice lined wool coat. And how much was it? Hmm, $7, but then half off pink tags. So literally like less than a like grande Starbucks and you can have a nice winter coat. So you can have like a whole wardrobe of coats. And if you live somewhere freezing, you want to have more than one coat because you're just gonna be wearing that thing all freaking winter long and you're gonna, everyone's gonna see you in it. Don't you want a little bit of variety? Get thee to the thrift store. The other coat I got, the last item I have to show you guys today is this gorgeous like deep royal blue coat here. This one has, I mean, again, from the eighties, you can kind of tell by, well, I don't like this lining, this hideous lining um, that it is from the eighties, but it is again, fully lined, fully like very thick wool coat, hundred percent wool on the outside here. Um, again, I plan on wearing it almost in a more 60s way, but I don't even mind, like, I really like 80s oversized coats. Um, again, maybe this is Blade Runner talking. Uh, the influences of, like, that kind of over, like, oversized noir, like, film noir kind of silhouetted coat. I really like that. Um, they had definitely had oversized huge coats in the 40s as well. I'll even include a picture here of, like, how ridiculously rectangular <laughs> some of the coats in the 40s could be. And this one has pleated um, shoulders up here, so it has this big puff sleeve on it almost kind of like a princess diana style coat that's what i kind of reminds me of like something that something like princess Diana would wear back in the 80s uh just something something about i guess blue and the 80s together i don't i don't know what it is that makes me feel that way but something does so i was really excited to find this coat as well as the other one this one was actually uh, 8.99 and not on sale so i paid a whole whole nine dollars for this this wool coat here um, I will get this one dry cleaned as well as the other coat. So I guess it will be a little bit more money in the end because of having them dry cleaned, but way less than a new wool coat would have been. So I'm really excited to have this one. I really wanted a colorful coat. And so I was really happy to find this one in a bold color, um, especially with like a, a pleated sleeve. I like a strong shoulder, um, whether it's from the eighties or the forties, I'm down. It's fine. So those were the items I picked up recently while out thrifting. I don't go nearly enough, uh, go thrifting nearly enough, really. Um, not that I don't shop <laughs> because I shop online, as you guys know, most of the time, but I do clearly need to go out more often because there's plenty of things that I like out there that are just crazy and expensive to me. Like it's crazy. The quality of things you can get like a silk blouse for $3 or a wool coat for three or $4. Um, the quality you can get at the thrift store for such a low price is just it's just crazy to me. So if you uh, like shopping, but don't want to feel bad about spending too much money or, you know, contributing to over consumerism of fast fashion or anything like that, get thee to a thrift store. You can have your maximalist lifestyle for a minimalist price tag um, or minimalist price tags tend to be actually quite high. So a, a minimal price tag, but a maximalist closet, which is, as we all know, I, um, I don't, I can't live a minimalist life. It's all about more and more with me, which I'm not here to give you a moral, you know, anything. So tell me what you guys have been finding while out on your thrifting adventures in the comments below. I'm always excited to hear about people finding vintage out there in the wild. I did actually see a um, 1950s or even earlier maybe um, fur like cape while I was at the um, one of the ARC thrift stores, but I don't buy fur anymore, so I passed it up. But it was really cool to see a very nice quality 1950s vintage item while out and about. I always like seeing vintage in the wild. Thank you guys for tuning in today and I will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>